So it's now been over four months since I installed this Bluetti EP800 whole home power system. And as a reminder, this unit is capable of running split phase 240 volts. So basically it provides the power that you can run your whole house off of. It can do up to 7,600 watts continuously, and it can surge to 70 amps. And so far, the EP800 has performed flawlessly in powering up this whole home. It can be used as backup only, in case you don't have any solar panels at all. And this unit right here is capable of having a total of 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage. I have three of these batteries, which are each five kilowatt hours each. So the system I have here on this home is a total of 15 kilowatt hours. And while 20 kilowatt hours is the max for one set on this unit here, you can actually put two of these in parallel and have up to about 40 kilowatt hours. And paralleling two of these units together, you would have over 15,000 watts of continuous running capability. So that's pretty impressive. So the average home uses between 20 to 30 kilowatt hours per day of electricity. And if you have one of these units with 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage, that would basically allow you to last in a grid down situation about a day. But we all know in a situation like that, we would dial back on a lot of our electric usage, a little less AC, obviously, to be able to stretch that out to two or even three days of backup power. And for those of you who understand electricity like I do, you can install this thing very easily by yourself. Now, for those of you who don't or are not comfortable with electricity, I highly recommend just calling Bluetti and they can hook you up with a licensed installer that can put one of these together in probably a day. And I'll have a link in the description of this video to where you can purchase this unit with about a $600 discount as well. And that code will be in the description of this video. Now you can use the Bluetti EP800 in multiple different ways. One way and the way that I use it is to have this house powered all the time by the EP800. As long as the batteries are charged to over 20%, it's going to run every load in this house. Now, if the batteries get below 20%, then it's going to automatically switch back to grid power to just power the loads needed until the sun comes up and the solar panels charge this unit back up above 20%. So using it like I do, you're going to save on your electric bill dramatically and probably close to eliminate it, depending on how many, how many solar panels you have. Now we have about 95% of the house's home panel on this critical loads panel you see above my shoulder here. And the reason we don't have all 100% of the circuits is because this panel is just not quite big enough. We could add another one right beneath it and be able to power everything. And if you use this unit the way we do, obviously your power bill is going to be close to zero if you have enough solar panels. And in the event of a grid down situation, this thing's going to act uninterrupted power supply and you're not even going to notice that the power went out. Now, another way to use the EP800 is for backup power only. Now, for those of you who have like a tiered type of rate system where your electricity rates go up higher between, say, the hours of 4 p.m. and 10 p.m., well, you can use this even without solar panels and just program it because it has the time of use setting where you can program it to literally stay charged when the time of charging is cheap, basically at that tiered rate when it's the lowest from your electric provider. And then you can program it to when that rate, let's say at 4 p.m., that rate goes up dramatically. You can program it at 3.55 p.m. to start discharging from your batteries until 10 p.m. when that rate finally goes back down. And just that alone, even not having solar panels, this unit could probably pay for itself. And even using it for just time of use, you would still have the ability to have power even when the grid goes down because the minute the power went out, the Blue Eddy system here would notice that. And within milliseconds, the Blue Eddy system here will take over and your TV won't even turn off through that power outage. It'll just keep on going like nothing ever happened. So my electric company let me know just a couple months ago that they were gonna change out our old outdated meters for a smart meter. And of course it's for our benefit, right? Because they said it's gonna be great because now we'll benefit from meters that can do tiered rates. Okay, so that's gonna benefit me? No, it's not. Basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna lower by a few cents the rates during the times of day that nobody's ever home and we don't really use electricity. And they're gonna jack up the rates dramatically during the times we actually need it, which is in that afternoon, evening time when everybody gets home from work and needs to cook and air condition their house. So seeing that notice from my electric provider about the new meter with tiered rates, it doesn't bother me at all because I'm not going to be affected at all from it. In fact, I'll actually probably make out because I'll make sure to never have to charge this Blue Eddy system during those higher tiered rates. So I'll be using more of the lower cost, lower tiered rate electricity if I needed to top this thing off if the solar panels weren't doing the job because of storms or cloudy weather. 
Now I'm gonna do a demonstration of running a bunch of loads on this thing like it's in backup mode. So basically like I am attached to the grid using grid power and then the power went out. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so I have got one, two, these two full-size refrigerators here, uh, two more full-size refrigerators in the house, and then one giant uh, chest freezer that's big enough to fit a full cow. So a total of basically five fridges and freezers. I turned on all the lights inside the house. So I've turned on all the lights, all the ceiling fans in the house, turned on the big screen TV, and we are using 1,500 watts right now, or 1.5 kilowatts, running all those fridges, lights, fans. Basically, the whole house is running right now. So why don't I start a toaster and see if I can boost that wattage up. All right, I got a toaster here. Let's make sure that's glowing orange. Yep, toaster's on. It's boosted us up to 2.4 kilowatts. All right, now let's kill the grid power. So you can see this operating like the grid went down. So the minute I pull this lever, that completely pulls us off grid where there will be no help from the grid on this Blue Eddy EP800. I also have the light right there next to the door on so you can watch it. So let's pull it and see what happens. All right, barely a flicker on the light. Let's go check the toaster. Toaster is still running. All the lights, fans are still on, TV's still going. All right, so I've turned off all the lights in the house, the TV's back off, the fans are off. Now really all that is running is the, what, five refrigerators slash freezers, and that's pulling about 835 watts. So that gives you an idea if your house is just kind of cruising with no AC, no heat on, you've got five refrigerators, that's about what you pull. Usually you have one or two compressors running at a time and they kind of switch off. So those of you who have a lot of fridges or freezers like we do, that's about what you can expect, kind of continuous, somewhere between like 400 and 800 watts from all those refrigerators and freezers running. So hopefully doing that demonstration is showing what it would be like if the grid basically went out while you had this Blue Eddy EP800 connected, you wouldn't even see your TV go off. That's how quick this unit just picks up all the loads. So if you have the budget, the EP800 could be a good product for you if you want a whole home backup system. But do keep in mind that the EP800 here will not sell back to the grid. If you're looking to do that, you want to get the EP900. That basically is the exact same unit. It just has the ability to sell back to the power grid if that's what you're looking to do. Now I'll have a link to the EP900 and a discount code as well in the description of this video. So what is my overall opinion on this EP800 now that I've had it running? I mean, a little over four months now. Now, on a performance level, it's exceeded my expectations. It has ran flawlessly. I've had no problems at all. We've done one firmware update since we installed this thing, and that was easy to do. Over-the-air update, just use the phone, connect it to Bluetooth, and it'll flash the new firmware in. So it's very simple. And again, the way we've been running this thing is we've had loads running on it 100% of the time for the last four months. This unit is always running this house. So we do not use it as backup, though I can see a use case for it in that scenario, but we want to lower our power bill. It's done a great job of doing that. And if we added more solar panels, we would probably be able to go nearly 100% off grid with this thing. But do keep in mind, this house is ran on propane as well. So the big appliances like the oven, the water heater, the dryer, those are all on propane. So those are large loads that don't have to be on this system. Now, if you had an all electric home, in order to be able to use this system at 7,600 watts max with just this one and not put two in parallel to bring it up to 15,000, if you're just running this one unit at 7,600 watts, you're going to have to have energy efficient appliances like a heat pump, uh, washer and dryer, a heat pump, whole home air conditioning system. So it uses a lot less either than your big traditional four ton unit. Also even a heat pump water heater. So it's not pulling that much because those regular water heaters, but the two electric heating elements, those can pull like 5,000 watts at a time when they're running. So obviously that takes up like 80% of the available wattage on this unit. So if you're going to go all electric with this thing, you're going to have to have more energy efficient appliances. But I recommend that anyways. When you're operating at night on batteries, you really want energy efficient appliances. You have to have that if you want to remain off grid the entire time. Now with those heat pump appliances that I mentioned, like the water heater, like the washer and dryer, air conditioning, 
Are you sacrificing your standard of living for that? No, not at all. Those units all work great. Now they are expensive to buy those heat pump appliances brand new, but you also get a federal tax credit for installing those as well. So you can write that off on your tax return, provided you have enough income that you pay federal income tax to be able to get that credit back. So my overall opinion of this is if you want to go 100% off grid, you would have to have energy efficient appliances, unless you want to put two of these in parallel. Or if this is for a small cabin, you could easily install this only, have no power or no connection to the grid at all. So it is a great unit. It is expensive, but at least I can give you a discount code to knock about $600 off this thing. So check that out in the description. Well, that's it for now, everyone. Thank you again for watching. I am humbled by your comments stating how I have helped or this channel has helped you become more energy self-reliant. Keep sending those comments to me. That keeps me motivated to keep doing these videos. Anyways, make sure you subscribe to this channel, guys. Like this video as it really helps. And we'll see you in the next video.